Right, I am just arranging the cells which I have got. What you do with this this website is free. Um, Second Life Storage it's called, like Repack or Repacker. You type in your number of cells, all the milliamps, what it contains, which has already been tested and written on. You write out your number of cells in series there, and then you put the number on parallel. You click Generate Pack, which is there, and it does a magical thing and it arranges them into let into parallels of six like that and there's going to be 13 in series so it gives you 13 and what it does it balances the cells out because they're all different milliamps um, and it gives you a deviance which means difference um, let's have a look so yeah you can see that that's that's row number one row number two three four and so on until it gets to obviously your last one pretty good site for nothing so I got this battery kit off eBay it comes with the top and the bottom plastic battery cell holder it also comes with the chargers and all the nickel strips so place that on the floor I know the first one's positive because it even got it's even labeled up positives makes it even simpler so place that wherever you want to and now it's a case of finding the cells what's on the computer screen and placing them in the correct slot so that's the first line in and I know the bottom one, the first one is positive so obviously you put that positive down the next one's going to be negative so you want your positive facing up well that's the batteries in as the computer suggests right got to put the lid on that's fun right wasn't too bad that is it with the top and the bottom on next thing is to try out the new little welding tool for 20 pound it does work because I've already made one this is my second battery pack right that's a little 20 pound welder it's not bad actually doesn't come with any instructions um, on the board there's a tiny little button <clears throat> now when you press it in and hold it comes on with this pulse and that's when it's going to do the weld you press and hold it it goes green let go and it does a double pulse don't like these ones press it again sounds like a cricket press it again and it goes red now when it goes red when you touch these probes onto your terminals it'll only fire the weld when it's actually making contact which is what I like but I tend to need how should I say you've got to give it four pulses on the same point otherwise it won't stick um, but I am using two 15 amp batteries so there's like 30 amp there basically you get your two probes don't touch them together you push one on one side one on the other and that's when it's welded but I always give it four pulses to make sure it's got a good weld the more you put on the better to be honest and then the next one push down hard the cables do do tend to jump seem to get a, a good weld with, with four, four spot welds. Um, can you see that? I'll just do another one. It's a bit awkward with these cables. I have actually extended them. I've actually put a heat sink on top of that little welder as well because then components were getting quite hot. It is a slow, slow job with this welder, but for 20 quid, it's not bad actually. If it's just a hobby thing you're doing. Right, the next thing, that's the battery all welded up. The next thing is this 
which is a BMS battery management system. When I first watched a few videos on how to do this, it scared me to death looking at all this lot, but it is quite simple. So we shall plod them with that. I'm going to hot glue this onto here, like so, to keep that in position. And then on with the soldering. And that's my new soldering iron. 20 quid I think off eBay, it's 60 watt at adjustable temperature. This battery management system, I've just realised, could actually fit inside here. Inside the battery, there's a little slot for it to go inside so it's a lower profile. However, if anything goes wrong with this, and they often do, or they can do, so I've heard, if it's fastened here, at least you can take it off simply without having to disconnect all your batteries to get it out. So if that was in there, you wouldn't be able to get it out. So, hence why I'm sticking it on there. First of all, plug this in gently. Right, you've got to find your negative. The first wire is black, so you need to find your negative bar. So that is positive and that is negative. So we shall keep the solder away from the battery. We shall solder, tin that up. That's your negative, so solder your negative on like so. Oh, it's a good solder now, this. So that's your negative on. And then you go the next one to the negative, all these little ones go to the positives. So this one, we shall tin this up. And that one will go opposite to that, which is that. Scared me to death doing it. Well watching this. And you've got that one, so you get your next one, which will go. Right chaps, that's all the wiring on that side done on the BMS, apart from the, the main inputs. On this particular BMS, it's got B minus and C minus. Now your B minus goes to your negative on your battery pack where the other black wire is. It is on this one anyway, B minus, and that will be soldered onto there. So that's all the wiring complete, we'll just do a battery check, this is where the test meter falls over, this is my cheapo test meter, it's going to fall into, oh yeah, it's going to fall, stand up, negative, positive, 54.3 volts, you can actually run, run across, 12 volt, 20 volt, 20, 29, 31, 45, 54, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, 4.1, and so on. 4.1, 4.1, 4.1. All is good. 